resume recording. Do you guys see anything now? Well, I see that it's recording, but right now it's just like, it has like join audio, share screen it, invite other. Okay. I think, okay, now we got it. All right. So what do you guys see on, on your. Right, on right your, now Khan Academy. See Khan Academy? Okay. Yeah. All right. See if I can. All right. So you guys see modeling. Do you see uh, that my little interactive tool or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me let me kind of go see here. How about now? Do you guys see Desmos? Uh, yeah, we do. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do this morning is I'm just trying to, this is the first time I've done Zoom. So I'm trying to figure out the features to see if it's going to be helpful. Um, we can do some of your problems and I can do it on, I can do it on the whiteboard where you guys are you know, talking with me um, about talking through your problems. Have you guys been watching the videos as far as what I've been sending out? I've been watching some of them. I mean, I've watched some of them. But I didn't completely understand it though. Okay, did you, have you watched the unit test where I went over the whole unit test yet? Have you seen that? Uh, I haven't had the chance yet. I was going to do that today. Okay. All right, so um, I'm not, because the thing is, I don't know who watches. I just see that people, some people view them. I don't know who watches them and who, and who doesn't. It's not something I can like tell. So what, which one is, is giving you the most difficulty as far as, do you want me just to go over like uh, say just one of these graphs? Like if you got one of these problems, like how you would do it or. Yeah. I mean, try to cover as much as possible, but okay. I think like doing one at least for each, I could figure out the rest. Okay. Um, Kara, I know you got like, a, you have hundreds on pretty much everything. Um, what's, what, what, uh, what's been helpful for you? Um, I went and watched some of your videos for the harder ones, but I mean, I, I've just been working all of them out and whichever ones I can get wrong, I go back and rework it the way that Khan tells me to or that you show how to do it. And then I have it in my notes and I, I just look from that. Okay. All right. Daisha, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out. Okay. So we have, hold on. We have, um, Angie, can you hear us? Okay. All right. Looks like we have, Oh, my participants are. Looks like they're down to six. All right. Um, Hannah, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Just making sure. All right. Right now, I'm, I'm just kind of getting used to the, uh, the features of Zoom. So I'm hoping that I saw some people join. Some people haven't. So how about this? Let me just, uh, let me kind of go over some basics real quick of, of like how to interpret the word problems. All right. If you have a problem. That, the, very, the very first point, can you guys see this okay? Yes. All right. If you guys have a problem that starts out with the maximum and then goes down to the minimum, so if they give you a point that starts out at the max and then it goes down to the minimum, I'm going to change the minimum. What, what type of graph do you think you're going to be having? Like, how would you interpret from maximum to the Minimum. What do you guys? What would you guys think if the if the green line's the midline? Cosine. Yeah, it's cosine. Okay, and more specifically, it's going to be a positive cosine graph. All right. So let me go. Let me go back real quick, and we'll we'll kind of take a look at a problem, kind of interpret what if it's going to be sine or sine or cosine. All right. So let's take a look at this one right here. So this one, see, how it has a maximum at zero eight, and then it has a minimum at five two. So we're going to go ahead and use that use that point. We'll call this zero eight, mm -hmm. and we'll call this five two. That's what you can do, right? All right. So it says it goes from it goes from the the maximum to the minimum. Now this point right here is basically halfway there because this would this will go back up as a cosine graph. It'll go back up to that point. And what I want you guys to see is I want you guys to see how it's broken into quarters. All right. So each of these is broken into a fourth. 
And you're right, this is a cosine graph. It's not a very good fourth there, sorry. There you go, one fourth. So how far have we traveled? Anybody, I think anybody can answer in Zoom. From here to there, how far have we traveled? Halfway. Halfway across. All right, so let's talk about our, let's talk about how we're gonna write it. Y equals A cosine BX minus C plus D. All right, what do we call this distance right here from the midline to the maximum or from the midline to the minimum? What do we, what's that referred to as? Amplitude. Yeah, that's the amplitude, right? So what is our amplitude from say eight to here? Well, what would be our midline? What's, what's halfway between an eight and a two? So what is what does this number right here represent? I was curious about this. That's our midline. Okay, so if we take this if we take this maximum value right here, we add it to the minimum value right there. We add those together and divide by two, you get y equals five, which gives you your midline. Now, of the values of the a, b, c, or d, what is the midline? Which one of these letters represents the midline? D. D, correct. So we're going to put the five right there. All right. Now, if our midline's five and our maximum's eight, and our midline's five and our max and our minimum's two, what's the distance? What's the gap right there? What's our what's our amplitude? Amplitude's going to be three. And by the way, this is a positive cosine graph, so which our a value is going to be positive three. Now, one thing you guys need to know that our C value will be zero because there is no phase shift. Does anybody know how to tell if there's going to be a phase shift or not going to be a phase shift? Anybody figure out a way to explain that to others? That's what confuses me. That's what I've always like had trouble with and why it took me so long to get some of the problems. I don't know how to tell a phase shift. All right, let me let me let me go to let me go to Desmos. We're gonna type some things in, and maybe we'll kind of. I'm just gonna I'm gonna change my settings to uh, just zero. Zero to ten. And I'll just go zero to call it two two pi. All right, and then the y axis will keep the y axis the same. So if you have the cos, just a regular cosine of x graph, got to make sure it's in radians. All right, so here's your regular cosine graph. I'll go negative two, positive. There we go. So right now you can kind of clearly see that it starts here, and it finishes right over, right over here. But if I did a little phase shift right here, if I said, if I take, I took that x. And I said x minus two. Where does it start? It starts two units over. If I said x minus one, it starts one unit over. So how do I know if there's going to be like no phase shift? I know if there's going to be no phase shift if it starts. If your graph, if you're interpreting it, it starts right there on the y axis for the sine of x. If it starts right there on the x-axis right there at zero zero now obviously we can add we can add numbers we can make it go up we can make it go down but if you know your graph is starting on the y-axis where does sign typically start right there at the midline even if you added one to it it's going to start right there the midline would be y equals one Anything that starts on the y-axis has no phase shift. So how did I know this has no phase shift? It starts right here at zero and an eight. That would have started at a one and an eight, a two and an eight, a four and an eight. Then I know it had a phase shift of two, a four, or a five. So we'll, we'll probably have one where it has a phase shift and I'll be able to explain a little bit more. But this one, anytime that starts on the y-axis, 
think of it, no phase shift. Let me see how many people we got here. Um, here. Angie, can you hear us okay? Oh, hold on. Need to unmute. Come on. It's not. All right, I'm trying to unmute everybody. Savannah, can you hear us? Yeah. All right, I'm trying to unmute everybody so everybody can hear. All right, well. There we go. I think we have unmute. Everybody has an opportunity. If you, have, if you can speak, you, can, you should be able to uh, go ahead and chime in if you have a question. If you want me to stop and go over something again. All right. So hopefully everybody can hear me. All right, I'm looking at the participants right now. Everybody's unmuted, so you should be able to speak. So right now, the one thing we need to figure out is our V values. We're, we have our amplitude, which is the gap between our maximum and our midline. All right, so our A value is three. Now we need to find our period. Now, the distance from right here to right here, that's halfway there. Well, how far have we traveled from zero to five, we've only traveled five units. So this distance from right here to right there, that gap is five units. So what am I gonna have to do to the five to get all the way across? I'm gonna have to double it. So what is what does this 10 units represent? 10 units represents the length from here all the way to here. That's called the length of the period, where basically from beginning all the way to the end of our function, that's 10 units. So we, that, we call that the length of the period. So what's the formula for the, to find the B value? Does anybody remember the formula for the, for the B value? Two pi over B. That's right, two pi over B. So two pi over B is equal to the length of our period. So what are, you, what are we gonna set it equal to? We're gonna set it equal to 10. So we set it equal to 10, now we just do our little cross multiplication. We get 10b equals 2 pi, divide both sides by 10. We get b equals pi over 5. All right, because 2 tenths reduces to 1 over 5, we can leave it as pi over 5. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this information, we're just going to build our, we're going to build our cosine function. So right here, I'm going to scroll up a little bit more. What am I going to plug in as the A value? Three. The value is pi over five. There's no C value. There's no phase shift. Then we put plus five. Now, before I type anything into the Khan Academy, what I always like to do is I like to type it into Desmos just to make sure I haven't done some silly mistake along the way. I want to make sure it goes through zero, eight, and five, two. Now I'm going to stop real quick. Um, of what we did, does everybody understand the distance between the maximum and the midline is the amplitude? And does everybody understand how we interpreted this as a cosine graph? Whenever you have to start out at the max and go to the minimum, you're going to interpret it as a cosine graph. Here's a question. What if we started out at the minimum right here and it went up to a maximum? You start at a minimum and then go to a maximum. How could you interpret that? Negative cosine, right? Negative cosine, right. So if you start at the minimum and go to the maximum, it's going to be a negative cosine graph, okay? If they start you out at the midline, so let's say they started you at the midline and then they go up, how would we interpret it from the midline to the maximum? Midline to the maximum. How would we interpret that graph? We do you sine or cosine for that? Sine. Sine, correct. Right. If we go from the midline down to the minimum, how do we interpret it from the midline down to the minimum? A negative sine? Negative sine, you're right. Okay. So whenever the Khan Academy, whenever I'm doing these problems, the very first two, the, I'm, I'm looking at the point that they give me and I'm looking at a specific order. If they start out the max and they go to the midline or they go from the maximum to the minimum, I know I'm dealing with a positive cosine, all right? 
So that's why I interpreted this as a positive cosine graph. I'm going to go ahead and type this in, make sure it's right, and we'll type it in and, and go on to the next problem. Or if you have a problem that you guys have written down, I will go over a problem that you already have written down, and I can I can interpret it up here on the on the white screen. All right. So I'm going to type in a three cosine. Uh, make a little vision bar here. Pi over five x plus three, or sorry, plus five. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. All right, so here we go. We have a zero and eight. Then we have a five and a two. If I can see that, I can clearly see that that's the maximum and that's the minimum right there. That makes me a lot more confident that what I did was was correct. All right. So now I'm going to type in three cosine, open up parentheses, pi over five. Now there's the x value, so I'm going to put the x right in here and then put plus five. All right, because I feel like I feel pretty confident now it's going to be correct. All right. Now, can you guys see, can, can everybody see the screen okay? Yes. Anybody not able to see the screen? Where it says unit test? We, this one will be pretty easy. What do you guys think the amplitude of this is going to be? Seven. Yeah, because that's the that's the amplitude. Okay. Um, but if we took it, if we looked at this graph right here, and we know it's we know we know the answer is going to be. Show us your car. What? Yes. what? With your cat. Yeah, I don't have a cat. Dr. Megan. Oh. Where's your cat, Megan? He's sleeping right now. Funny. All right. All right. Sorry, I had Carrie, you got me distracted. All right. Oh, hold on. All right. So we know our amplitude is going to be seven. All right. But if I wanted to find the length of the period, this is our B value, all right? This is our C value, and this is our D value, all right? So, let me take a look real quick. All right, Hannah, I'm gonna pick on you, all right? What's our, what's our midline? It's six. Six, correct. That's that. That's correct. Okay. Um, how would we find, uh, Daisha? How would we find the length of the period? Um, would you do two pi over three pi over four? Yeah, two pi over three pi over four. Man. So when you guys have to do this, what do you have to do to the numerator and the denominator to get rid of this three pi over four? What do we have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by? What do you think? Reciprocal. The reciprocals. We go four over three pi, four over three pi. So everything here cancels out. All right. And when you multiply two times four, you get eight. Right. And then there's also an eight pi. But in the denominator, we have a what? We have a three pi. What happens? Those cancel out. So what would the length of our period be? Just Eight over eight over three. If it asks you for the length of the the period, so sometimes they'll give you the same the same function, except they won't ask you for the amplitude. They'll ask you for the the period. All right. Oh, how would we find the phase shift? They said, what's the phase shift? Anybody remember the formula for phase shift? C over B. Say that again. C over B. C over B, you're right, C over B. So what technically is our C value? Pi over four. Pi over four. And we'd have to divide that by three pi over four. And then when we do the exact same thing where we do the reciprocal, fours cancel out, pi's cancel out, we're basically left with one over three. 
So our phase shift means it would just shift over to the right one third unit. So just basically from zero, um, zero six, it would shift over to a zero and one third on this graph. All right, so that's how you guys would do the, do the phase shift. The amplitude's pretty easy, you're just seven. All right. Now, if you guys are doing these uh, interactive widgets, all right, let me kind of show you what I what I do on this. If I see it as a sign, I don't switch the dots. I just move this up or down, and this basically looks like a sign graph. But if it's a cosine graph, I will take the dots and I will switch them. So now I can interpret this as a cosine graph. So if the sine graph, leave the dots exactly the way they are and just move them up or down. So does everybody feel comfortable about how to do this? Or you want me to show you real quick how to, or does anybody have a problem they want me to work on? I don't want to waste y'all's time. Does anybody have something they're like specifically want me to help them on? I mean, if you want to do this real quick, then that would be cool. Okay. Um, this right here, all I do is I just type it into the, just type it into Desmos exactly as it appears. All right, there's no phase shift. So we know, basically, here's what we know. We know it's going to start at zero, one, right here. There's the, there's the midline. And we know it's going to go down seven units. So we know it's going to go down, way down here. It's going to go down seven. I just got to figure out, like, how far is it going to go down? All right, so all I'm going to do is go to Desmos. And take a look. That's one. And it's when I'm doing this, it's always important to write to type in the midline. That, that, that's always helpful. It kind of gives me some good points to, to, to work with. We got zero, one. And then the next point I'm going to plot is two pi, comma, negative six. So zero, one, and two pi negative six. Zero, one, two pi, negative six. Now, it's, it, I want to make sure it looks like this is, it still looks like a sine graph, a negative sine graph, and then I hit check. All right. Now, on this, does anybody see a D value on this one right here? No. I don't see a D value, do I? So what would the midline be? Zero. Zero. Oh, here we go. Cool. We got the period. Got a, one dealing with period. Now, just so you guys know, I'm recording this, and I'm gonna actually, and I'm gonna go and see if I can put this on. If I need to put this on YouTube, I can too. I've already done a unit test um, all the way through, so you can watch that. But I can also put these sessions on YouTube for you guys to watch if you want to as well. So there's my B value. So how would I find the how would I find the length of my period? Maybe 2 pi over 7. Yeah, good. All right, 2 pi over 7. 2 pi over B. So right there, that's all I, that's all I would have to, that's all I'd have to do. Oh. So I just give an exact value. So what would I write? 2 pi over, 2 pi over 7. All right, type that in. Two pi over seven. All right, so here we go. They've given us a graph. And they say, oh, they want us, look what they want us to do. They actually want us to interpret this as a cosine graph, all right? So they want us to interpret it as a cosine graph, and it has a maximum, and then it has a minimum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to interpret this as a negative cosine graph. I'm going to say that's the minimum and that's the maximum. So if you guys want to do this problem with me, you could do it on a scratch sheet of paper right here. Just put these points right here and right here, and you can work through this, and it won't take too long. But since they already have a nice graph right here, we get to use that graph. 
a minimum and a maximum. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm going from here to here, back down to here. So I'm looking at a negative cosine graph. And it's going to be a negative A value. All right. Everybody okay? Yes. All right. Here we go. We're going to start finding different things. I'm just going to list out my different values we're going to find. A. B. C. D. All right. So first thing we're going to find is we're going to find our... Um, we're going to find our midline, all right? So I want you to take the maximum. I want you to add it to the minimum. And then we're going to divide the maximum plus the minimum, divided by 2, and that will give us our D value, our midline, all right? So our maximum is negative 4. Our minimum is negative 5. Add them together, divide by two, we get negative nine over two. I'm just gonna put minus 4.5. That's our, that's our midline. All right. Now, our amplitude's gonna be pretty easy to find, so I'm gonna go and draw it in. There we go, there's our midline right there. So, our amplitude is just this distance from, well, I can't even barely draw it. It's just this distance from right here to here. So what do you guys say our, our amplitude would be if you had to look at that? Like, what's the gap from here to the, the midline? So what do we, basically what we got to do, what do we, we have to take what? Take this negative 4 and this negative 5. What's the, what's the gap between a negative 4 and a negative 5? One. One. That's right, one. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take half of it. So our amplitude is just going to be one half. Well, what's our A value going to be? What do you think, Megan? Um. For amplitude of a one half, remember, amplitude is always considered to be positive, whether the graph might be negative. But if our amplitude is one half, I know that's going to be dealing with my A value. What am I going to have to put in front of the one half? A negative. Negative. So we have a negative one half. Okay. All right. Now comes a little bit. Look, we got to do a little bit of math. We got to do. We got to find the length of our, the length of our period. Okay. So I'm going to highlight some numbers here. We're at a negative one, right here, and we travel all the way to three and a half. So think of it on the number line. How far have we traveled if we've gone from negative one to three and a half? Like what's the distance from here to right there? How far is this distance right here? What'd you say, Daisha? How far? What do you think? Is it four and a half? Yeah, that's right, four and a half. So okay. this distance right here is what? 4.5. And how far have I traveled in the graph? From here to there, how far have I gone, Daisha? Halfway. Halfway. So I know I'm going to have to travel, what? How far am I going to have to travel from here all the way to the finish line? I'm going to have to travel another half. Four and a half units. So what, is that, what does that help us find? What, is, what do we call this distance from here? all the way to there, which is this traveling all the way across. We call that the length of the period. So this is the period length, I'm gonna write period. And our period length is nine units. So now what do we have to do? Just do two pi over B equals nine over one. So the hardest thing I think sometimes is what? Finding the length of the period and then finding your B value from the length of the period. So we have 9B equals 2 pi 
divide both sides by nine, and b equals two pi over nine. Two pi over nine. So my b value right here will be two pi over nine. Any, que any, any questions on that, how we found the length of the period? Feel free to chime in. Here's the one thing, I can't see anybody's hands. If you're raising your hand, I can't see it, just so you know. <laughs> All I can hear is the voice. If you use your voice, I can hear it. If you don't use your voice, I can't hear you. I'm not, I don't have telepathy. All right. Pausing, okay. How about, how about we, how do we find our C value? What are we gonna do for our C value? Anybody have any idea? Any clues? Like, no way, I'm not gonna talk on this. All right, so right now, Let's think about this. Where does our graph start at? It starts at a negative one. Where does a cosine graph typically start? When you guys see a regular cosine graph, where, where do we start? Right here on the y-axis. All right, everybody hear me okay? Give me, Megan, hear me? Yeah. Stacia, hear me? Yeah. Hannah? Yes. Angie, are you still out there? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So we're typically right here on the y-axis. So right now we're going to go over negative one. So that's our phase shift. So our phase shift, I'm going to write phase shift. Equals negative one. So now what we have to do is we have to do our C value divided by our B value equals negative one over one, that's what we're gonna do. We have a phase shift, all we've done is gone from here over negative one units. So what is our B value, everybody? Our B value is two pi over nine. Hopefully I haven't screwed anything up yet. All right, so we're gonna put C over our B value, which is negative, sorry, not negative, two pi over nine equals negative one over one. Do a little cross multiplication. And we get C equals negative two pi over nine. So now we have our C value, which is negative two pi over nine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug everything in. I'm gonna show you guys kind of a, another way that you guys can plug things into your formula, see if this makes sense. So here we go. Let's go ahead and write this out just like it, just like it appears. Y equals negative one half cosine, open parentheses, I'm gonna put two pi over nine. Then I'm gonna put an X. Now if I plug in this negative two pi over nine into, into our equation, it's gonna become a plus two pi over nine, and I'll explain that in just a second. Now, negative 4.5 is also negative nine over two, so I'm just gonna put negative nine over two. All right, so the reason why I wanted to make sure you guys know that I had to change this to a positive, if our C value is negative and you plug it in, this, this, these two negatives cancel each other out and it becomes a positive. But I'm going to show you guys a, an easier way to write it. And I'm, this is how I'm going to write it in the Khan Academy. I'm going to put 2 pi right here. I'm going to put x minus 1 right there, all over 9 minus 9 over 2. This is how I'm going to write the formula. I'm going to identify some things and see if this makes sense to you. OK? So. Right here, what does this portion of our function specifically deal with when I've written it like this? I don't know if anybody's watched any of my videos dealing with this, but this really, this helps with my phase shift. It will always be, in that parentheses, it'll be x minus whatever the phase shift is. So I'm going to have to put, actually put a plus one instead of a minus one. So right here, I'm going to put parentheses right there. That's going to be x minus 
the phase shift. Can anybody guess what this number is always going to be in the denominator? What that number represents? Well, I take a sip of my coffee. It, it, it is associated with the B value, but check this out. Look at this. Now, I want you guys to look up this graph. What is the distance from here all the way across? That was the length of the what? Length of the period. So I want you guys to understand the way I set this up, the way I set this right here, this number will always be the length of the, the period. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, if you guys have Desmos open and, and something, I don't know if you have something you can open Desmos and if you don't, I'm just going to type this whole thing into Desmos. I want you to see how things can be shifted left or right and change the period just by changing the number right here. So let me go ahead and type this into Desmos. Cosine. Let's take a look real quick. We've got two pi. And minus nine over two. All right. All right. So first, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure um, our points pop up on the screen the way they're supposed to. So if I go back over here, and good morning. My wife. We have, let me take a look. All right, let's make sure we have our points that we needed. Our points were what? Negative one, negative five, 3.5, negative four. Negative one, negative five, 3.5. Hey, cool, we found this is going to be the correct graph. Now, check this out. Can everybody see the length of the period goes from negative one all the way to eight? That's nine units. Watch, if I wanted to switch it to just two units, What's the gap between negative one and positive one from here to here? That's only two units. So I know that I can change the length of period. So what's this number right here going to be? Whatever the length of the period is. Okay. So if I want it to be a period of high units long, then I just type in high units long. And it goes from negative one. To, uh, this is the approximate value for if you look if you add one to this that gives 3.14 which is your pi value so i'm going to keep it there now what if i didn't want to have a phase shift then all i would do is i would just, just delete it and we would start right here at zero but look what happens if i go x minus one where does it start one unit over <clears throat> if i said x minus two starts two units over X minus three, three units over. So what I want everybody to understand when I'm hoping that you guys understand is if this right here, what does this part always deal with? The phase shift left and right. So it'll always be, I'll leave this up on the screen real quick. It'll always be X minus the phase shift. The number that's in the denominator right here will always be the length of the period. And then these are the easy ones. What's this number always going to be at the very end? That's always going to be the midline. And what is this? What's that always going to be? That's going to be our A value. So that always deals with our amplitude. Just remember the absolute value of A will always equal the amplitude. All right. So listen up. Does anybody have any questions on this one before I type it in? Or do you want me to leave it up here so you can write, write this down? Am I going too fast? This is my first, I, I can't see your eyes. I can't see if anybody has the deer in the headlight look. So I have no idea if you guys are understanding or not understanding. So. Daisha, how about you? Does, does this make sense or not? Or, or, do you like writing it in this form or do you like this form over here? I like the first form. You like the first one? 
Yeah. Okay, where you have to find the B and this. But I want you guys to understand. Let me let me show you something real quick. Does everybody see this right here? I'm going to type this one in because I want you to see that these actually are the, the exact same. Deja, have you have have you do you have this written down right here? Yes. Okay, it's good. Could you help me help me out here? All right. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, but I know it's y equals negative one half. I know it's cosine. And then um, I think we got what two pi over nine x. Yeah. And then we have plus two uh, two pi over nine. I believe. And then we have minus nine divided by two. Because I want you guys to see these actually are the exact. This is written more in a traditional sense. This is more when somebody gives me an amplitude, a phase shift. Um, if, if I just if they give me the components of it, I can just quickly write out the answer without having to do a whole bunch of um, complicated math. But in the Khan Academy, just so you know. Luke likes Luke's like like putting it in this way. This is this is Luke's method. He like he doesn't he isn't like this way. Um, I like this way. He likes this way. But they both they they're both acceptable. They they will both work. All right. So if I go over here, it says give me exact formula. All I got to do is put a negative over two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it. One period was nine units. Midline was negative nine divided by two. So there's our absolute value, negative one half. Two pi. All right, should be good. So does everybody understand? You didn't have to type it in this way. You could have also typed it in like this. It would have still accepted. I wish I could type it in both ways, but I'd choose one or the other. All right, so um, does everybody understand how to do the, use your interactive widgets? If this is a cosine, what am I gonna have to do if it's this cosine? Does anybody remember what I told you guys you had to do? Switch the dots. Mm -hmm. Switch the dots, switching the dots right there. There we go. All right, everybody, what's my, what's my amplitude? Shout it out. Two. Good. What's my midline? Negative one. Negative one is correct. So I know if my midline is at ne um, negative one, which is like down two units, and my amplitude is two, typically it starts here. So if I'm starting at negative one, all right, I know on my cosine graph it's going to go all the way up to a positive one. But I'm going to go ahead and just type it into Desmos, make my life a little bit easier. But y equals, what was our midline? Is it negative one? Negative one. Um, we have let's see, two cosine. Let's take a look. One over two x. One. Home. There we go. Zero one. Uh, it, it's important to do the midline because it allows you to be able to plot the next point if you need to, which is pi comma negative one. But you could also do two pi common negative three. So I'm gonna do zero one and then I'll do I'll do two pi negative three. I'll, I'll do the maximum and the minimum. Two pi negative three. Two pi oh hold on. Look look hey look what what is this this is not gonna work because what happened? What does this point represent right here that I can't seem to get off of? Midline. That's the midline. So I can't use 2 pi negative 3. So uh-oh, what am I going to have to use? I'm going to have to use pi negative 1. Okay, all right, fine. Pi negative 1. And then you can see the minimum now is 2 pi negative 3. So if you, it, it, won't let me, it won't let me use that. So what do I have to do? I have to choose the midline. What's the best way to find your point dealing with the midline? Type in your midline. Then you can see it a lot easier. You can clearly see now it's going to intersect. You're going to see that midline right here and here. All right.
All right. Um, one of the things right here is, does anybody want me to do one of these word problems dealing with phase shift or are you guys bored out of your minds? You guys have any questions of specific problems that you guys have? I mean, if you could do a word problem, that would really help me. Okay, we'll go and do it. Well, this this is the, the this is the one that people have been given the most difficulty. It's the it's the word problems with phase shift. Um, so we'll go ahead and work through this problem. And I'm not expecting you to write everything down. I'm just going to draw a little graph to go with it. It's not even going to be like on graph paper. It's just going to I'm just going to draw what they've given me, and then kind of interpret stuff from there. All right, so. I'm just gonna do all of my graphs so we can kind of read this together. It says, in the month of March, the temperature at the South Pole varies over the day in a periodic way. So it's gonna be a trig function. Its highest temperature is negative 50. So we know this is our max. And that reaches around 2 p.m. The lowest temperature is negative 54. So we put that's our minimum. And it's reached a half day apart from the highest temperature at 2 a.m. Find the formula of the trigonometric function that models the temperature in the South Pole t hours after midnight. Okay, so we're, gonna, we're, we're starting with what? 12, 12 a.m. So if, we go, if we're starting at 12 a.m., it looks like at 2 a.m., I'm going to put 2 a.m., we are at negative 54. And then at 2 p.m., now think about this, 2 p.m., how many hours after midnight is 2 p.m.? Interesting. So we have, I'm going to put, this is, this is hours after midnight. So this is 2 a.m. 2 p.m. is actually going to be 14 hours after midnight okay so 2 p.m we're going to be what 14 hours after midnight 2 a.m is just two hours after midnight we're at negative 50. so what are we going we're going from our minimum to our maximum all right here we go we're going to draw a little graph here start out the minimum draw it up go to our maximum and we're going to go back down to the minimum. All right, so this point right here represents 2 comma negative 54. And this point right here is going to be 14 comma negative 50. So I'm just, write, I'm just writing minimum maximum. So I think probably the trickiest part is dealing with the time. You're going from what? 2 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it's and it the key thing is it says it's got to be t hours after midnight. Cool. Any questions of why I started at 2 and then I went to 14? No. Everybody good on that? All right. So let's find our let's find our pieces. Anybody want to uh, talk about the amplitude, what they think the amplitude is? I'll put amp. Anybody want to make any conjectures? Six. Somebody said what? Six. Let's check. Let's midline check. Midline, let's see here. Well, let's, what's, what's, what's halfway between negative 50 and negative 54? I was thinking for the x value. Oh, okay. You're saying, okay. You're, you're, look, you're looking at the x values. Right. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You're looking at the x values. Cool. Let's look at our, let's look at our y values. What's halfway between negative 50 and negative 54? 52. Yeah. Negative 52, which I never want to be in. So negative 52, that's our, that's our D value, that's our midline. We'll put midline, negative 52. Okay, so what's the gap between negative 50 and negative 52? What's our gap right there? 
Somebody's got to say it. Come on. Be brave. The gap between negative 50 and negative 52. Four. Two. Oh, two. I was looking at 54. You say, yeah. So basically now, what's the formula for finding your amplitude? What's the formula? You got to take your maximum, all right? Take your maximum value, take away your minimum value, and then divide by two. So our maximum value is negative 50. We take away our minimum value. We have to negative minus a negative turns that into a positive, and you're basically left with four over two. So our amplitude is two. But here's the thing, you gotta be careful. Because what is it, what kind of graph does this look like, everybody? How would you interpret the look, the look of this graph? Negative cosine. Negative cosine, you're right. So we know our A value has to be negative. So we're gonna put our A value is negative Two. We're going to interpret it as a negative cosine graph. So we're going to we're going to figure this out right here. We're going to put a cosine bx minus c plus d. All right. So our a value is negative two. We're going to find our b value. We're going to find our c value. But our d value that's the easy one. That's negative fifty two. So we're, we're we're about halfway. We're about halfway there. So the next thing we're gonna find is we're gonna find the length of our period. It's gonna be important. So the length of our period goes from here all the way to here. So how far have we traveled from say there to, from right here where we kind of started to right there? That's, that's halfway there. So what's the gap between two and 14? 12. 12. So we know that's 12, right? That's 12. So what am I going to have to do? Just add another what? Add another 12. So what's going to be the length of our length of our period? 24. 24. Interesting. It's like the length of our period is a whole day. Okay. So we have the length of our period, that's 24, 24 units. So if we want to find our B value, we do 24, sorry, two pi over B equals 24 over one. Cross multiply, get 24B equals two pi, divide both sides by 24. What does it look like our B value simplifies to? What's two over 24 simplify to? Five over 12. Yeah, pi over 12. So we're gonna put B value is what? Pi over 12. All right. And the last thing we're gonna worry about is our, um, is our phase shift. Now this part takes got to kind of think about your phase shift. Typically, all right, if we're starting on the y-axis, all right, we're on the y-axis, that would be like zero hours after midnight. But where did we actually start? We started two units to the right of midnight, so two hours to the right. So our phase shift is actually two. It's actually like two hours. It, it, we shifted it two hours to the right. So our phase shift is... <laughs> What's our formula for phase shift though? Before, I guess before I go and do C over B, which is the formula, does everybody understand why I said the phase shift is two units? Because we started at a two and not, uh, not at zero. Hopefully that, hopefully that makes sense. All right. I'm assuming from your silence, it makes sense. All right, so what am I, what am I gonna plug in for B? Five or 12? Yeah, five or 12. So right now, for right here, I'm gonna put pi over 12. Once again, I'm gonna cross multiply. And I get C equals two times pi, two times pi over 12, which simplifies or reduces to pi over six. And there's my C value. 
So right now I'm going to type in, I'm just going to write in pi over 6. All right, so my phase shift was 2, C over B allows me to find my C value. My C value is pi over 6. All right, and this is the way my son, he likes writing things like this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the correct answer that will work. Negative 2 cosine. Going to put um, pi over 12. And I think I'm going to use the, I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it X right now, but I'm going to have to type in the letter T for X. And then I'm going to put minus pi over 6 and then put minus 52 right there. And that's how, that's what I'm going to type in. The only thing I'm going to do differently is I'm going to put the letter T instead of X. But let me kind of show you guys how I would write it if I wasn't going to write it with A, B, C, and D. Here's the way that would also work. See if you guys see how cool this is. All right. Does anybody remember what the phase shift was? Two. Yeah. So I'm going to put x minus two. Does anybody remember the length of the period? 24. Done. So I want you to understand these are the exact same answer. This one, look at this. What is 2 divided by 24? 2 divided by 24 is 1 over 12. And what's 2 times negative 2? That's negative 4. What is negative 4 over 24 reduced to? Negative pi over 6. So these are the exact same. A lot of times what I do is I just simply write whatever the period is, I just put right there in the denominator. And whatever the phase shift is right here, what is always going to stay the same in a sine or cosine function? What will always stay the same? 2 pi. Because the, the, the beginning period of any sine or cosine function starts with the basic of 2 pi. But I'm going to go ahead and type, oops, I'm going to go ahead and type in, I don't know why I put an extra box wherever that, there it is. I'm going to type it in this way so you guys know that this way also works. Okay. Either way, if you type that into the Khan Academy, it'll work. If you type this into the Khan Academy, it will still work. Um, Megan, do you have do you have this bottom one written down? I have both of them written down. Cool. You can help me type it in. All right, here we go. All right. Oh, and then I got to do one more thing. I got to find 5 p.m. and I'll show you how to do that. All right, Megan, help me out. It's what was the, uh, what's my A value? Um, negative two. Negative two, all right, and we have cosine. Um, then what was it, was it pi over what? Pi over 12. Pi over 12, then I got the letter T, all right, and then it was minus, was it pi over six? Yes. Okay. Pi over six, and then we have yeah, minus, minus 52. Minus 52. Okay. So the next part says, what is the temperature at 5 p.m.? Well, how many hours after midnight is 5 p.m.? That's what you got to think about. All right. So let's go over here. Um, I'm going to type this. I'm going to type it in right here. Negative two. You can think about it. How many hours after midnight is 5 p.m.? Because that's going to be important. I over twelve x minus I over six. All right. All right. I want you guys to see that these are the these are the exact same. Everybody still there? Yeah. Okay, I'm just making sure because it says 10 o'clock. I didn't. I wasn't sure if, it, if something that would get automatically get cut off or not. So hopefully, hopefully they would. So I want you guys to see that these are the exact same graph, right? 
Um, now, anybody figure out how many hours after midnight 5 p.m. is? Would it be 17? 17, let's see here. We have, um, if three, wait, 2 p.m. was 14, right? 3 p.m. would be 15, 4 p.m., so yeah, 17, right? So what is that? It says negative 50.58, negative 50. 0.585. So what would we have to write? If it's at two decimal places, I think we're gonna have to write negative 50.59 is what we're gonna have to, to write. Because this is 2 a.m. and we said if we go back to our work, um, we said 14 was 2 p.m. and so we have to add three to that, so that gives us 17. So right here, what I'm gonna type in, right here, what is our temperature at 5 p.m.? We are going to say negative 50.59. Negative 50.59, all right? We got it right. So I, I don't wanna, hold you guys up from, from doing your work, but I want you guys, I do want you to see, before we before I say bid adieu, all right, um, I want you guys to see that these right here are the exact same. This one, all you gotta do is just type in your phase shift and your period. This one, you actually have to find your C value and your B value. Um, so quick question before I go and close things down uh, for right now. Um, would you, was this helpful? Would you guys like to try to ske sometimes schedule through the week if you need some individual Zoom time? Would this be useful if I if you said, "Hey, can do you have a do you have an hour or 40, 30 minutes or fifteen minutes just to work with me?" Would this be something that would be useful for just one on one type stuff? Yeah, yeah. I think it's useful because I can't really ask questions during the video um, okay. that you have on YouTube. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I've kind of talked with Mr. Lapik, and so I'm like, all right, Mr. Lapik, I'm, I'm trying to do this new video conferencing thing. Um, so what I'll do is if, if you guys can send me, uh, if you need to send me messages on Remind as far as, you know, like, hey, can you help me with this particular problem? Then maybe I can just, we can set up a quick Zoom meeting. I can send you an invite on the Remind. And then we, I, I won't, it won't necessarily have to be like uh, where, you know, we have, four or five, six people, I could just say, hey, for 15 minutes, let's just do your problem and I can walk you through it up here on my screen. Because one thing I have is I have a, I have a whiteboard where I can, I can work through things. So would that be, would that be helpful to, to, to everybody or is that something? Yeah. That, just let me know yeah. if, that, if that's something you want to do. Um, and then so, I can kind of, we can, because all I got to do is basically start a meeting and then I just send you an invite link to that specific meeting and then you click on it and you can, you can join. So all good? If we need help, we just text you on remind. Yeah. If you can, okay. you can text, but we can text back and forth on remind if you have, if you have questions. Okay. Okay. So um, sometimes, I mean, obviously I know you guys have your own, you're, you're dealing with everything that's going on in the world. And um, I mean, I, sometimes I'm going to be trying to find toilet paper just like you are. So um, hopefully you guys have some. Uh, oh yes, a lot. Good, good. So we know where to go. Who's uh, who has who has a lot of toilet paper? In case I need to steal some. Just you kidding. Can. I have I have a pack of twelve. In the oh, back. nice. Nice. Just kidding. Uh, three packages in right now. <laughs> oh man. Well, hey. Uh, here's what I'd like. By the way, I think you guys, if you guys have Zoom. Since you guys all, you know, like like signed in, you guys can actually help each other doing that. I mean, obviously, it's just there's you can FaceTime and stuff like that, but Zoom I think is cross platform or whatever. But um, how about this? You guys just send me a text. Well, I'll start a meeting, and then you can ask me like you can show me your problem, or just you know you can give me the maximum or the minimum or whatever you're struggling with, and we'll we'll talk it through. Okay. All right. Right. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and um, bid adieu and hope you, let me know when you, when you guys need more help, okay? Thank you. You bet. You all have a good day. Bye. Bye.